Welcome back to Subscribe, guys. My name is Quest. You can find me on Twitter at QuestingBeast or TikTok. You can find me on TikTok at BeaverMagic. And I'm here again with... Yep, my name is Barry. You can find me on uh, TikTok as OldTaku. All right. We got some new spoilers for uh, Quandrix uh, for the new commanders. Um, it's uh, all token-based, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, there's a board wipe. There, there, there are more uh, cards to talk about. And the new Bear Commander 2, uh, let's get into the first one, is uh, E6, uh, Fr Fractal Bloom. Uh, one blue, one green, four colorless flying. The first time you will create eight, one or more tokens during each of your turns, you may instead choose a creature other than uh, E6, Fractal Bloom, and create that many tokens that are a copy of that creature, and it's a 4-4. Four, four. Wow, that's a... Uh... That's pretty good for um for a token ability, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, does it? I mean, it's nice to have a progenitor mimic in the in the command zone, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so at, at every upkeep, you're making a Nyx Bloom or you're making a Crater Hoof. Yeah, it's definitely a really powerful card for now. Just Simic can do tokens now, not just Selesnya, but like now, Simic could like do all these busted things that Selesnya cannot do. Right. Oh, and, man. And yeah, and then, so you're going to have all the counter spells from the blue. You're going to have a lot of uh, very, what's it called, reactionary type of actions. Yeah. Uh, more than Selesnya ever had. You know, Selesnya is more more focused on prote protection of the board state mm -hmm. versus this is stopping thing, spells from even resolving. Yeah. Um, but the fact that you could choose a creature to make a token of, and, you know, with, with all the token doublers in green. Oh man, like it's gonna get nuts. Second harvest, even the commander. Uh, I don't even know what the commander was. The the commander is the person that is pretty much parallel lives. Or oh, I, I know that the, the name. The name I couldn't think of. Like man, I couldn't think of the name. Oh uh, yeah, but yeah, it's definitely gonna be a, a gross um, semic deck for sure. It's uh, just seeing that card. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can already like see all the broken stuff that people are going to do to like just corrupt it more. Second harvest, um, level four engine, doubling season. Like there's so there's so many tools for tokens, but oh, yeah, man. but but I mean, like, would you choose this over the face commander? Uh, probably not. May yeah, because just because this is uh this is uh, dependent on the upkeep. Yeah. So this is saying that. This is going to stay on the board for a round of EDH. Yeah. <laughs> Which is already pretty hard enough. Like, when you, when you put something, like, say you put a Nyx Bloom Ancient down on, tur on on a turn that you can't abuse it. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, I hope this sticks around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it survives. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and so this one is, is, is more... It, 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 it falls victim to that type of mentality. Well, like, oh uh, man, if I could, uh, if I can untap with this, it'll be great. <laughs> yeah, and the art looks really cool too. It's definitely something new that I haven't seen in Magic. Yeah, um, fra fractals are new to this set. That yeah. that's a new uh, type of creature. So, yeah. Um, yeah, let's get to the next one. We have Dika Fractal Theorist, uh, four and a blue legendary human wizard. It has Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery. Create a zero zero green and blue fractal creature token. Put plus uh, X plus one plus one counters equal to the mana value. And you have three and a blue target creature token can be blocked this turn. Man, this card will be really good if with three mana. <laughs> uh, but yeah, right, not everything it's... could be three. Not everything could be in a legacy uh, <laughs> vintage uh, mana curve. Because this is literally just a shark typhoon. Just, just that. Um, wow, it's. Well, I mean, this one's a little bit worse than Shark Typhoon because Shark Typhoon triggers off of like non artifa right? yeah, artifacts okay, yeah, and enchantments. Right. Uh, but still, to have a token, another tall Rand type of effect mm -hmm. into the command zone, it, it's going to make the game get really out of hand really fast. Uh, Blue's not really known for building uh, ridiculous board states. Yeah, they're not. But <laughs> this card will probably make r ridiculous like board state. Well, even if you have like Shark Typhoon added to it, or Ugh. like Tall Ran, it's like, oh, wow, that's a huge board for Blue for some odd reason. Yeah, and then the fact that it has an extra ability where uh, a token can't be blocked this turn, I don't know if it'll replace Tall Ran in the command zone. 
But um, I th- I think it might. I mean, even though it's one more mana than Tauran, the fact that it triggers off copy effects too, mm-hmm. uh, I think that board state can get out of hand faster. Uh, the only thing I'm sad about is just it's just another counterspell tribal commander. Yeah, it is unfortunately. <laughs> like five five mana, you play it, and then you're just holding up like a handful of counters or draw spells just to look, dig for more things. Yeah, this is probably going to be like a control uh, deck. Uh, not sure about CEDH play. Um, it's definitely really strong though. I mean, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, it won't. I, I don't know if it'll be in CEDH, but it's definitely going to be a strong eight or nine. Yeah. Because, like, all right, you drop it on turn five, you hold up a uh, force of negation, you hold off, a, you hold up a force of will, and those, even though you're casting them for free, you still get the, you still get the yeah. fractal token uh, equal to the converted mana cost of those free spells. Mm-hmm. You can yeah. even play, like, cards like foil and misdirection. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I think this will be just another counterspell <laughs> tribal commander, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, let's but get let's to the next one. Let's get on to the Bear Commander, uh, Ruxa, Patient Professor for two green, two colorless, and legendary creature Bear Druid. Uh, whenever Ruxa, Patient Professor, enters the battlefield or attacks, return target creature with no abilities from your graveyard to your hand. Creature you control with no abilities get plus one, plus one, and you may have a creature you control with no signed combat or no ability signed uh, their combat damage uh, through uh, they were blocked, weren't blocked. And yeah. four four, <laughs> <laughs> definitely gonna be added to the bear commander, uh, Leah, right? Or uh, Ayula? Ayula, yeah. yeah. Uh, definitely new card in there. <laughs> I mean, one. I mean, yeah, green, green. I mean, as of late, green has gotten a decent amount of recursion. Mm-hmm. But when you when you when you could have it work in tandem with Ayula as just another bear, yeah, that that's gonna fight or put plus one plus one counters on bears, and then have the added effect of recurring certain bears. I don't know. I I never thought about building a bear deck, so I don't know if there's any um. There there's a quite a bit, and I just thought of a little little jank uh, with this card. So there's a black card I think called Jinx, um, something where like creature cards in your graveyard had no abilities. So basically, you're just returning any type of creature card <laughs> if you have that card out. But just super janky uh, for black and green or like any three color deck. But oh yeah, yeah black uh... <laughs> and green bears. Where's that at anytime <laughs> soon? <laughs> yeah, I just thought in my head, but yeah, it's definitely gonna be a sweet commander. I mean, yeah, there's definitely people out there that love to make bear commanders, uh, mm-hmm. even though it's it's a super casual type of deck. Uh, I mean, obviously, you could still win the game with overrun effects like Triumph of the Horrors or Overrun, yeah. Overwhelming Stampede. Uh, but, but I'm pretty sure um, all the bear enthusiasts <laughs> are rejoicing as they get a, a bear lord and bear cursion. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Definitely a sweet card for sure. The design of it, just a uh, druid oh. bear, like the face. It had like little glasses. It's like teaching class too. <laughs> it, oh man, I love the art. It's like in Avengers Endgame when you saw Smart Hulk. <laughs> yeah, that's basically. exactly who he is. And then he's writing on the the chalkboard with a uh, with druid his powers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm pretty that 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 seems like a really fun include for uh, and just for people that love bears. All right, moving on to the top four cards of the set right now. Uh, one is a theoretical. Thera- oh my goodness, oh, can't speak it. English. Uh, theoretical duplication. Yep. Uh, two colorless, one blue. Instant. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, uh, this turn create a token that's a copy of that creature. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, for three mana, you just take your opponent's like whole board if you want to. Well, I mean, you don't take it; you just copy it. it yeah, yeah, copy it. It is a three mana instant possible cl- clone legion. Yeah, it's definitely way better than that like one uh, six mana spell that you used to play. Uh, whenever a creature on the battlefield this turn just gained tr- control of it for like three blue, or three colorless. Yeah, <laughs> definitely way better for <laughs> this. But you do make a copy. And it's a token. It's definitely going to be definitely abused in this type of deck because you make, like, double tokens Yeah, with it. <laughs> yeah, so, like, you know, if someone wants to try to create a hoof and uh, Avenger of Zendikar you on, on a turn, you're like, I'll do that, too. <laughs> do it two times. <laughs> yeah, do it two times. Yeah, it, it's going to be... The fact that this is also an instant, which is the, really the only way it's going to work, right, 
is uh is more nuts because there's cards that kind of do this but not to the same effect we have a from rivals of ixalan i believe was a crafty cut purse Mm -hmm. whenever your opponents would make tokens you make those tokens instead yeah which is nice because you take away say someone wants to dock side you're like nah man i'm gonna (laughs) dock side but yeah just this this almost works as just like almost like a fog yeah it is possibly Definitely really strong card. Like it's like even like if your opponent's like um, uh, let's say what's a what's a good um ramp uh creature card or something like that. Trying oh to yeah, right yeah. Now. I mean you have creatures like wood elves, um, yeah, stuff like that. You could always use it in a pinch. Uh, but yeah, maybe you could use it to end the game. Yeah. Who knows, right? But hey, someone who has a Nyx, someone's gonna have a Nyx Bloom on this table, all right? That that card is just nuts in EDH. I feel like they sort of <laughs> made Nyx Bloom a legendary creature, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> oh yeah, right. I mean, there's still ways to get around it. You know, what's up, Sakashima? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But this is definitely, I, I and the fact that it's a three drop is, is what makes it way more nuts. Yeah. Uh, so we have the next card. We have Replication Technique, four and a blue sorcery. It has Demonstrate, which means that you can choose an opponent, um, and they can copy. They can copy the spell, but it's a May, so you you know you could use it in a political fashion, right? Uh, but the effect is create a token that's a copy of target permanent you control. I love how it said permit because, like, if you don't have anything, like, it luckily it doesn't say non land and you pick your opponent that doesn't even have any permits. At least they could copy one their land so to move ahead forward, forward while, like, you're r- really going crazy with all your tokens. Uh, really nice card. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you're if you're going to choose to use this for the demonstrate, uh, with the demonstrate ability, you're going to choose the person who it's going to benefit the least. You don't exactly want to give the person with a Zendikar resurgent another Zendikar yeah. resurgent. Um, but, yeah, you know, maybe someone's behind. Maybe they're, like, uh, they're, they've missed a land drop or two, but they have a soul ring or an arcane signet. They could at least make a copy of those. Mm-hmm. So this is a nice little political tool. I know, I know there's people out there that don't like the politics, that just want to <laughs> go for the throat, but sometimes, sometimes you just need a, you need a little, you need a hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could you, I mean, could you, uh, so you, you have a mana reduction uh, EDH deck. Could you see yourself using this? Ooh, man, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, for you, it's one like blue one, mana. One so. blue mana, create, like, um, untap Wizard where I could just untap Kaza. It just seems really strong. Or maybe you need a second Isochron Scepter. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> permanent, too. Um, the fact that it said permanent, it's really strong. It just, oh, man. Yeah, the fact that it says permanent, uh, I don't know if people are going to slot this into Ovar just because it's another target effect. Yeah. Uh, probably not, just because Ovar wants to go, like, their, their mana curve usually tops out at three. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just yes. a nice little political tool that you guys Set. can uh, slot into your deck. Yeah. All right, moving on to the next card. It's Guardian uh, Argumenter for two colors, one green, creature troll wizard. <laughs> 2-2 two, two, flash and commander creature you control get plus two plus two and commander creature you control have or commander you control have hex proof that is that is nice little uh nice little flash effect there yeah it, it seems like i feel like they kind of forgot to, to put this in commander legends because we got a whole bunch mm-hmm. of commander legend cards like that yeah uh, <laughs> but they're like oh snap we forgot that one let's go and slot it into the, whatever green deck we have yeah it's definitely a really powerful card uh, just have fl- the fl- hatch flash and then like you just like nullify anything that targets your commander anything that you need Le- unfortunately just green i would love it to be in different colors but no green green, green is green, fine. green's fine yeah <laughs> Yeah, and the fact that it also buffs up your uh, commander creatures, uh, which, I mean, you know, some people play the partner stuff, so now you have two commanders with plus two, plus two. That's the minuscule effect of this uh, card. Really, what you're looking for is just the instant hex proof, mm-hmm. which is, yeah. I think, especially for, like, any any decks that have green in it, your, your curve is usually around four or five just because you're playing the big stompy stuff. This this will just give your commander like a little bit more protection. Like I could, I was thinking about slotting this into my Zakama deck just because it's a nine mana commander. When it gets wiped off by a path to exile yeah. or a reality shift, it's like oh, I mean I have the mana, but you know it's gonna set me back. So and this, it definitely buffs up your commander too. The plus you plus you would definitely like oh 
Oh, right. Chef's kiss right there. Yeah, I mean, because then, like, I mean, like, all right, so, like, check it. I have Zakama. I swing in. They're like, yeah, I'll take nine. No, you're going to take 11. And next <laughs> time, if you don't deal with it, you're dead. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a nice little, a nice little added protection for green decks. Yeah. All right. For our, one of our last cards, we have Oversimplify. Three blue and green sorcery exile all creatures. Each player creates a zero zero green and blue fractal creature token and puts a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the total power of creatures they controlled that were exiled this way. What a really strong board wipe. <laughs> Just exile everything and they get like tokens. It's Oh, it's only one, or they create a... Okay, they do for only each. create... For each? Oh, okay. No yeah, mind. on an equal... Oh, no, 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 the Oh, power. there's only one. Okay, that's su- super stupid. Like, it's so stupid because, like, you're over here having, like, double season, and you get to create, like, two big fatties. Like, you just only act out all tokens on your field. Like, you're not even that hurt. Like, it's... All, all the other players that you're playing with are really hurt. They only have a big fatty. They can't... It doesn't even have trample. It's just a big fatty with X counters on it. Yeah, the, this is something that is not normal in this color pie. Yeah. <laughs> we have, you know, for green, there's really just bounce effects, uh, like, you know, like excavation or eight the rise, things like that to sort of get rid of the board. Or there's uh, Azuri's Predation, where maybe your 3-3 three, three wolves will get big enough to kill all the other creatures on the board. But the fact that you're exiling, not destroying, is what hurts a lot more. Just because, um, I mean, there's people that play uh, what's called Descend Upon the Sinful, you know, which exiles all creatures. Yeah. Yeah, exiling effects are so powerful just because there's so much recursion in our in, in the EDH format. That sometimes, like you know, uh, just like in Pet Cemetery, you know, th- it's better <laughs> off dead, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes in our format, it's not better off dead. It, the graveyard almost just becomes a second hand for people. Basically, just oh man, this really destroys players sometimes. Like you really like on games, like you need like creatures that like with my Kaja deck, right? All my wizards do things. I need them to not die or go away. If they go graveyard, that's fine. If you go going exile, well, got some just playing blue red good stuff at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think this is gonna be one of the more powerful cards in this EDH deck, uh, just simply for the exiling at five mana. Yeah. Usually, uh, board wipes that exile things cost six and above, and the fact I, and the small downside of giving them maybe a five five or a mm-hmm. seven seven creature is is is, is very. It's, it's just it's worth it and then you do a theoretical duplicate so you just get all their creatures <laughs> like their tokens too so you make double token uh, <laughs> seems super gross or, or you or you make a crafty uh, or you flash in crafty cut purse to take them yeah or they yeah. don't even get those tokens anymore you just oh, take man, them man right or you just have all no you can't actually do that because your uh crafty is getting acted at the same time because it's all in one instant right Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. yeah. Right. But if you have like a theoretical uh, <laughs> duplicate, yeah. you're just like, yeah, man. You'll also make the copies. Uh, yeah. I do want to talk about one honorable mention, and this is mainly it's almost like the bear, the bear, uh, bear category of nicheness <laughs> in Commander. But I want to talk about Spawning Kraken. <laughs> Spawning Kraken is a five and a blue creature Kraken. Whenever a Kraken, Leviathan, Octopus, or Serpent you control deals combat damage to a player, it creates a 9-9 nine, nine blue Kraken creature token. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> it creates a 9-9 nine, nine token. That, I know I know who's who wants that card, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the fact that this doesn't, this doesn't say or more... So like uh, so, pretend you have like I said like uh what's it called the um the thing that makes tentacles, I believe I don't know if they're categorized oh, yeah. as leviathan or um, octopuses. That's I don't I think they're just called tentacles. Oh okay then, but I mean like, I think there's enough uh like krakens, leviathans, octopuses, and serpents in the game, where where if you're making nine nines, that's a, that's gonna become a terrifying board easily. Yeah, and very quickly. Because, uh, you know, um, Storm Time Leviathan says that it has uh, unblockable. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a very uh. scary card. All right, guys. Um, that's the video for today. Uh, like, subscribe, and comment what's your favorite card out of the whole uh, Quandrix uh, spoilers uh, for EDH. And uh, very soon next week, we're going to start streaming. 
on uh, Twitch or maybe YouTube, one of those two. But uh, we'll definitely figure out next when the set comes out on Arena. Uh, I am Quest. I am Barry. And this is Dry Guys. <laughs>